Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of HSP TV. Today's episode number 25 is called How to Bounce Back When Life Knocks You Down. I think we've all experienced situations like that. A good example is for instance when you are still working for an employer, you wanted to have a certain job, you went for the interview, you felt it went really good, you also pictured yourself maybe having the job already, maybe you even applied the law of attraction, focusing on seeing yourself actually doing the work, actually being there and having the job and you felt really good about the conversation, about the interview, how everything went and then you get the call and they tell you you didn't get the job. And if you have a company, then the same goes for clients. You had an interview with a potential prospect, the interview went really well, you had the feeling that they would sign up with you, and then at the end of the interview they tell you they don't want to work with you. That is a setback, that's when life knocks you down. And we HSPs, we tend to take that really personal. And it's not the, uh, the, the event itself, that knocks us down, but it is our thoughts about the event. And what do I mean with that? Well, it's not that you didn't get the job that makes you feel like shit. It is the way you think about it that makes you feel like shit. You think, did I not say the correct things? Did I not do the correct things? Did my breath smell? Did they not like the way I was dressed? Uh, did I not explain good enough my qualifications? Uh, did I not explain good enough what I can do for them, what my value is? We tend to take things personally and that gives us grief and that gives us stress. So it's not that you didn't get the job, it's not that you didn't get the client. It is what you think about not getting the job or what you think about not getting the client. Especially when you think that it has something to do with yourself. So the first step in getting back up when you are knocked down is to change your conscious mind. So changing the way you think. So instead of blaming yourself and finding faults within yourself or faults within your performance, you need to look at what you're thinking at that moment. Because I can guarantee you that you are thinking negative things. Mostly negative things about yourselves, but negative things nonetheless. And the moment you start to change that, instead of seeing it as something negative or something that you didn't do correctly, look for the things that you can learn about it or what it is giving you for not having the job. Because if you were meant to have the job or if you were meant to have the client, you would have gotten the job or you would have gotten the client. So instead of focusing on the negative aspects, focus on the positive aspects. So change the way you think about events. And the same goes when a partner ends a relationship. It can be your husband or your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend. It's not that they, the actual event of breaking up with you that is causing us pain and grief, but it is the way you feel about that they broke up with you that is causing you pain and grief. So it's not the action itself, it is that you are thinking uh, that you were betrayed or that uh, they probably lied to you for a long time because they didn't love you obviously because otherwise they wouldn't leave. Or, um, hi Marianne, <laughs> nice of you to join. So it's, it's what you think about the event that happened, what you think about your partner ending a relationship that is causing you pain and grief and not the ending of the relationship itself. So instead of blaming yourself, finding fault in yourself or blaming the other and being angry and upset and, and all kinds of negative emotions, change the way you think about it. Try to see what it is bringing you the end of the relationship. What things you can now do that you weren't able to do before. Uh, if I speak about myself, my ex-boyfriend, he didn't like to eat fish. It might seem like a simple thing, but if you had been together for seven years like we were, then you start to miss eating fish. And in the beginning, I used to cook separately for myself fish and for him uh, meat. But eventually you stop doing that because it's so much work. And then the moment the relationship ended, one of the things I thought was, oh, I can finally eat fish whenever I want to. 
and you see my face the moment you think things like that you start to feel good and you raise your vibration so the first step in bouncing back is reprogram your conscious mind and then the second step in that order it's a bit more difficult because it has to do with your subconscious mind you need to reprogram your subconscious mind and what do i mean with that well your subconscious mind those are the things that you do without really thinking about it and the first thing you need to notice uh, and, and examine for your subconscious mind is the beliefs that you hold because limiting beliefs are part of your subconscious mind and limiting beliefs are also a main contributor in why we think negative things because often things happen in our lives that remind us of things that happened prior so if something happens that resembles something that you already experienced and that gave you great grief when you experienced it then then that automatically triggers feeling that same grief again right now even though it might very well be possible that the situation is completely different but that's how our subconsciousness works at the moment something happens now that resembles something that happened in the past that gave us uh, anger or grief or sadness or whatever then we tend to feel that immediately in the now so Go and find what negative beliefs, what uh, limiting beliefs you have. Hi Doreen, nice of you to join. That you have that could affect the way you think. Because you can imagine, I hope, that when you have a limiting belief like I am not good enough, uh, that's a limiting belief I see with a lot of highly sensitive people in my practice. It's a fairly common one. But you can, you can probably imagine that when you are feeling that you are not good enough and your partner ends the relationship, that you thought, you see, he didn't think I was good enough as well or she didn't think I was good enough as well and you start blaming yourself and you start finding faults in yourself and that's not because they ended the relationship but it's also because you have the limiting belief that you are not good enough so that means that your subconscious mind is going to find um, uh, a support in every event that happens that supports the limiting belief that you are not good enough I have a free ebook on my website that is, uh, that is about transforming your limiting beliefs. So if you find that you have limiting beliefs, then please go to my website, uh, www.hspentrepreneurcoach.com and download my free Transform Your Limiting Beliefs ebook. It has a five-step method in it that will help you to transform your limiting beliefs into supporting beliefs. That is a big part of reprogramming your subconscious mind. Another part in that is your autopilot. And we have, we do a lot of things on autopilot and that's a good thing because if you should think about how to breathe or how to walk, that would be a colossal, um, it, it would take a lot of time. You need to think but every breath you take to breathe in and to breathe out and to expand your lungs and to let them slip again. Or when you walk, you need to think, okay, right foot first, put it in front, Close left leg, set left leg to the front, close the right leg again. You can imagine if that were your conscious thoughts, if you had to consciously think about walking and breathing, that would take up a lot of your time and there would not be time left for all the other cool and crazy things that you want to do. So having an autopilot and doing things on autopilot is usually a very good thing. But sometimes due to limiting beliefs or situations that often happened to us when we were younger, we develop an autopilot program that helped us at the moment we created it, but starts to hinder us when we become older. If I talk about myself, one of the autopilot things that I did is the moment I am faced with a big guy, long, tall, broad, and he is verbally or physically aggressive, I tend to, um, I'm not anymore, but I used to curl up into a little ball in the corner of the room because I grew up with a dad that hit me a lot and he was really big with really big hands. So as a little girl, I had learned to make myself small, make myself not visible and hide because that would mean that he probably wouldn't see me or that he wouldn't hit me. And that was a good survival tactic when I was younger. 
But the moment I started working for a boss and either the, um, the client or my boss was a really big man and, and they would become uh, heated in a discussion or maybe even angry and they raised their voice and, and, and made themselves big like this, I felt the same urge to retreat into a little bowl and crawl into a corner. And you can imagine that that is not helpful when you are older, even though it did help me when I was younger. So that was an autopilot program I needed to reprogram. So that are the things that you need to look for in step two when you reprogram your subconscious mind. The third step is to raise your vibrations. Because everything in life is about vibrations. Your thoughts are vibrations, your emotions are vibrations. Everything around you, all people, vibrate on a different frequency. And there was this guy that made the consciousness scale. And he discovered that when you vibrate on a number lower than 500, you feel sad and you have anger and you have grief and you have all kinds of negative things that you don't want because negative vibrations vibrate on a much lower frequency. So when you are sad all the time or scared or angry or hurt or um, grieved or misjudged or whatever you can think of that's negative, it pulls your vibration down. The opposite also is for when you want to rise above 500, because when you rise above 500, things start to be possible. And you can do that yourself, because the emotions that vibrate above 500 are the feelings of joy and happiness and gratitude. So it is important that you raise your vibrations by being as happy as you can be, by laughing as much as you can laugh, by feeling joy, by feeling gratitude. And there's always something to be grateful for. Like the example I told you when my boyfriend ended our relationship. I was grateful that I was now able to eat fish. That is something I was grateful for in the midst of all the pain and the grief and the sorrow that there is. And you have a choice on which you want to focus. You can focus on the hurt and the pain and the negative, but that lowers your vibration and makes that you get stuck in that situation. But you can also choose to look for the silver lining in every situation and find the things that you are grateful for and that make you smile. And uh, things that made me smile, even though I was really sad, was when my cat did something funny. Dived off the couch into a plastic bag and then toppled over, for instance. That made me laugh. And I, cho I chose to, to focus more on, on those moments. And it doesn't mean that I didn't feel hurt. And I didn't feel pain. And I didn't feel grief. Because believe me, there was a lot of that happening as well. But I didn't dwell on it. I didn't get stuck in my pain and my grief. I made the conscious decision to change my thoughts and to start thinking about the things that I was grateful for and the things that made me happy. And that raised my vibration. So doing all the step one and step two is already raising your vibration, but then also consciously choose to find the silver linings in the events that are happening to you because that will raise your vibration even more and this will help you to bounce back when the world knocks you down. So to recap, the three steps in bouncing back when the world knocks you down is first to reprogram your conscious mind. So that means that you have to consciously choose to think happy thoughts or better thoughts more positive thoughts instead of the negative thoughts. That is something that you consciously can do and that helps to reprogram your conscious mind. The second step is to reprogram your subconscious mind. And that's more difficult because that's the mind that you are not aware of. But you do that by finding your limiting beliefs and transforming them. So if you haven't done so already, go to my website, hspentrepreneurcoach.com and download the free ebook on how to transform your limiting beliefs. And also look at your autopilot system. What things that you automatically do that might not be working for you? Like um, when something happens that causes you pain, immediately go in defense mode and maybe call the other names or break off any context because they, they hurt you. That is also an auto response, an auto 
pilot program that might not be serving you in the things that you want to reach. And that's the second step. And the third step is to raise your vibrations. And that you do by making sure that you are more joyful, that you are more happy, and that you feel more positivity, more gratitude. And, and, and gratitude, I combine it with a gratitude walk, for instance, in the morning. I go outside and I look around and I name all the things that I am grateful for. And that can be the sun shining, the birds singing, the snow that has fallen, or the fact that I didn't have to drive my car when the snow had fallen. Or there are so many things that you can be grateful for even though you might feel down. And you have the choice. You can choose to go with the pain and the hurt and to get stuck in there. Or you can choose to feel happy and to find silver lining and to be grateful for all the things that you do have. I hope this was a valuable session for you. I hope that you learned something. And I hope to see you all again next week. Same time, same place, 5.30 Amsterdam time, live here on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Bye.